Welcome to Pivot, Pause, Promote, and now your hostess, Rebecca Silvestri. Hello, I am Rebecca Silvestri, VP of Sales and Marketing with Local Profile, Collin County's premier publication. This is Pivot, Pause, Promote, and today we're bringing you a show for leaders who don't let anything stand in their way. Not a global pandemic, not an economic downturn, certainly not this. But first, before we get going, I want to clear up one little thing. And that is, this is not an unprecedented situation. No, ladies and gentlemen, things like this happen all the time. This is business, business changes. Let's take a quick look in the past. What happened to taxis when Uber came along? What happened to brick and mortar businesses when the internet came along? Do I even need to mention Kodak? This, ladies and gentlemen, is our moment. We need to seize it and we can move forward. Do you want to be the Uber of your industry? I think so. To get us started, we're going to meet Georgia. Take it away, Georgia. Hi, everyone. I'm Georgia Green, founder and CEO of B Revolution. We help thriving, innovative companies with organizational development, leadership, and culture. I'm so excited to be here with you today to pivot, don't panic. Chris? Good morning. I'm Chris Scott, Chief Operations Officer at Higher Effect. With over 20 years of experience in corporate, I came to Higher Effect to bring customized, enterprise-grade solutions to our clients. I lead our business consulting, bookkeeping, and accounting technology teams. Jennifer? Hi, I'm Jennifer Scott, founder and CEO of Higher Effect. Uh, we bring freedom to founders and family leaders of family-owned businesses through providing bookkeeping, recruiting, HR, finance, and payroll solutions to help business owners get out of the back office and back into why they started their business in the first place. Buddy? Thank you, Jennifer. I'm Buddy Broyles with Visual Learning Solutions. We are a design and train com training company. We're here to help anybody who needs to train a large audience through video or e-learning e or other opportunities, including live events such as this. Back to you, Rebecca. Awesome. Well, today is our first show. It's Pivot, Don't Panic. And to get us started, I'm going to ask Georgia a question. Georgia, what are three practical things that we can all do right now to stay strong, keep steady during these, yes, they may not be unprecedented, but we're certainly feeling a little bit uncertain. So what can we do, Georgia? That's a great question, Rebecca. I'll give you three things. You, vision, action. So you, we believe at BU Revolution that it starts first with the person, then the role as leader. So it's about focusing on who you are and your character and controlling your emotions and identifying and controlling the emotions of others with your emotional intelligence above all else. So you have to first take care of you as the leader before you can do anything. The second thing is vision. So you guys, no one follows a weak leader to an unknown destination. We right now are in between point A and point B, and your people are relying on you to set the vision of where is point B. And we think right now, we don't know where point B is just because we're out of control of what that is. But what we're gonna show you today is how to set a vision for your company during this time to help you get your people to move towards point B, which is the third part, which is action. So you have to move. So in times of trauma, we go through three things, fight, flight, and freeze. You can't fight this thing. You can't flee from this thing. So what we're doing is we're freezing. We are shutting down. That might look like depression, lethargy. It might look like unmotivation, right? So your people are not productive right now. Maybe you are experiencing that yourself. The way that you combat that is through action. And that's what we're gonna go through today. And that's what we mean to pivot, don't panic. Awesome, thanks Georgia. That was very, very informative and I'm really excited to hear what else you have to say. So what exactly does it mean to pivot? What do we need to do, Georgia? Yeah, that's a great question. So by pivot, 
I mean one of two things, and this might be, you, you may be even doing both of these things inside of your company, but the first one is you take your current operation and just modify it to address the current needs that are going on right now. The second one is you do something entirely different than what you normally do in response to what's happening in the market right now. So two totally different things. And let me bring you through a local example. So we have an example of a company where Michael Engel, who is of clean sleep, and you can go to cleansleep.com, but he recognized a problem immediately. And due to the disposable nature and limited supply of N95 masks, they would quickly run out. So within 24 hours, he came up with a solution to turn his company's mattress sanitation uh, machine into a mobile N95 mask sanitation service. The FDA has approved the use of their machine to eradicate viruses, and the company has now deployed several mobile units to hospitals across Texas. So this is one example where they took their current operations and just shifted it a little bit to then respond in the market. But you're seeing other examples like distilleries making hand sanitizer. You're seeing restaurants do curbside service. You're seeing gyms go virtual and offering online classes. These are all really great examples of what it means to pivot. That's awesome. I love it. All right. Okay. So I've got my own business. I'm not a distillery. I can't figure out how to make hand sanitizer. I'm still very worried. I don't know how to pivot. Georgia, what are the steps that I can do to help me pivot? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's really almost like you're operating a startup once again. So you're going back to basics, but you're doing it really fast. So, you know, as a startup, your hair's on fire, you're building the plane while you're flying it, you're trying to come up with your business plan, you're working on the business while you're working in the business. And the biggest component to that is you need to move almost before you have it all figured out. One of the things that fear will tell us is that we're out of control and you're never gonna figure it out anyway. Well, what you need to understand is the best way to combat that is just to move. It is so much easier to turn a car around that's headed in the wrong direction than it is a car that's standing still, right? So the action item is to move. And you guys, right now, the economy is suffering. We are in a recession, right? So what is the economy? It is simply businesses selling and people buying. So I would argue that if you are a business owner, Right now, you have not only the right, but the responsibility and duty to sell. And selling right now might look a little bit different. It's more about service than it ever has been in the past. So it's about taking your operations and going through them one by one inside of the different um, constructs of each of the different business buckets, and then serving the community and moving right now. Right. I agree. So essentially it's about moving. It's about get it done. It's about do something. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it done. And you know what? If you do something and it's wrong and it didn't work, do something else. Today is a, today is a one day. Tomorrow is another day. So we just got to keep moving. I love it. Exactly. All right. So, um, next week we are going to talk about marketing, but right now we're going to talk about some financial because I know there's a lot of Gosh, well, anxiety about the financial side. So we're going to be talking to Jennifer. Jennifer, what are the available resources um, right now and how can we get to those? Jennifer? Is, thank you. It is an amazing question and one we've been answering quite a lot lately. Um, there are lots of available resources for business owners right now. Um, especially in the, the small business market. So or the small business segment. Um, which the SBA has redefined as any employer with fewer than 500 employees, which is super helpful in this time. Uh, there are loans available through the SBA, uh, various things that, that you can apply for in terms of economic injury, uh, payroll protection. Uh, those in, that information on all of those loans are available on the SBA website, sba.gov. Unfortunately, it is a very, very fluid process right now and things are changing by the minute, uh, certainly by the day, sometimes several times a day. 
Um, the best place that I've found to keep track of the regulations as they're being redefined and, um, you know, making more sense of what actually the whole plan is about is the treasury.gov website. Uh, the U.S. Treasury has been putting out FAQs on all of the government lending possibilities that are out there and helping uh, not only us as business owners, but also the lenders understand the parameters of all these different loans. Uh, there are a bunch of other resources as well. Um, Hello Alice has put out a grant application. Uh, TWU has put out a grant application. Um, the lots of foundations are supporting business owners. Um, honestly, at this point, just doing a quick web search on grants available due to coronavirus will give you a, an enormous amount of, of possibility, whether you're a small business, uh, for-profit, non-profit, uh, religious organization, there, there's opportunity out there for help. That's awesome. Okay, so just to recap, Jennifer, one, we need to go to treasury.gov. Two, we should Google ways I can get help um, with finances in COVID-19 and also I and if you don't mind me adding I would say it's a great what thing to do might be to just ask like oh ask absolutely your, ask social media ask whoever you can give so, us a um, call <laughs> we can help we're we're reaching out to as many people as possible just to put the information out there yeah precisely um, we will actually send out lots of links and everything in the recap um, when we follow up with this call. So if you missed any of these links, we'll send them to you. All right, we're going to move on to Chris. Um, and this is something that I know a lot of businesses are doing right now, and we're all worried about doing the right thing. Chris, what are the best ways to cut costs right now? Chris? So uh, <clears throat> we definitely are trying to keep everybody earning their wages. Um, and so, you know, how do you cut costs while stimulating the economy by pivoting and purchasing? Well, um, there's some basic blocking and tackling strategies. Um, look at uh, things that I group into subscription services. Um, you know, do you really need the Pandora subscription? The, you know, like how many office, different office programs or cloud solutions do you have? Do you have more licenses than you need? Um, you know, call your vendors if um, you know, your, your service is not right size. Um, get an adjustment. A lot of contracts don't allow for adjustments, but everybody wants to still have customers on the far side of this. Um, businesses are willing to work with you. So just you know, have a conversation. Um, one other thing to do is to look at costs that you don't look at very often. For example, um, insurance, uh, your telecommunication provider, maintenance contracts for your, your buildings, your grounds, uh, your equipment. Um, all of these things um, you know, can be renegotiated, can be adjusted. Um, you wanna make sure you've got the right amount of what you need, um, but not too much. Um, and, and finally, um, things like your uh, mobile data plans, um, your telecom plans. Uh, companies are consistently you know, fighting with each other for your business. And if you don't go periodically and look at the new options your company has, you could be leaving money on the table. So you know, if you haven't looked at your cell phone provider, and I'm not suggesting you switch, um, but I do suggest you look at just what your own provider has and call them and say, you know, hey, I'd like to update. Chances are you can get the same plan for less money. Right, Chris, that's Thank great you. advice. I love that. So the, my key takeaway is renegotiate. Right now, think about what you would be willing to do for a client to keep their business. That client that you're calling to renegotiate, they're gonna to wanna to keep your business too. So call, renegotiate, now is the right time to do that and it could save you a lot of money. Okay, so next up, we're going to go back to Georgia. And I think this is a really important question that we got from someone before the uh, session. Um, what can we as leaders do to support our team? Our team is suffering right now. Everyone is insecure. Everyone doesn't know what's going on. Georgia, what can we do to help our team? 
Yeah, that is a perfect question. And I think that's a great place to start because as we're looking at pivoting, we're really asking people to move through a time of turmoil to a new identified state. So the number one thing to address is their emotions because people are not gonna move until you address what they're going through on that deeper level. So sometimes I think companies will see a behavior in somebody and they're trying to correct the behavior. We see that a lot with say performance improvement plans where they're saying you need to change this type of behavior, but understanding that that behavior is deeply rooted in some sort of an emotion that is happening, some sort of an event that is outside of work and has nothing to do with work. In this case, there's a lot of fear going on. So having very open, candid discussions will help your team feel heard and addressing those will help them to change behaviors that will actually help you to move forward through this pivot. But you have to create a space that is safe for people to have those open discussions. In. And now more than ever, I love seeing the virtual technology because we're seeing people's humanity. We're seeing the cats walk across the keyboards. We're seeing the kids crawling all over everybody. We're seeing who people are as humans. And that's actually a beautiful thing for our workplace that's actually creating a sense of openness for us to discuss things at the human level. So the first step is, you know, as a leader, it's about emotional intelligence, which is the command and control of your emotions and understanding and controlling the emotions of others and helping your team understand how to move through their emotions. So it's okay to feel what you feel, but here's how we're gonna address it. So talking to your team on an individual level is key here. And you guys include them in the process. So as a leader, you don't have to have all of the answers. You don't have to have it figured out. A team is actually a group of people who come together with synergistic strength. So they can help you figure out where is point B and how exactly do we get there? So use your team's strengths that will also help them feel control over the situation. And that's really where fear is setting in is they're feeling outside of their sense of control. So the more that you include them in the process is actually gonna strengthen your plan and it's gonna help them deal with their emotions. And it's gonna show them that they, you are a leader that they can trust. A team is not just a people who decided to come together. A team is a group of people who trust one another. And the last thing that I'll leave you with is to check in more often. You guys, tasking is the opposite of peopling. And when we get into urgent crisis mode, we are high task. We are just boom, 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 get it done. You may be experiencing furloughs and layoffs. And so most of those tasks end up left on the people who are remaining. So those people are in extreme task mode. When you are in task mode, you cannot be in people mode. People is what actually gets the tasks done. So it's important to set aside time to have that people in component. So checking in with each other and it's okay to have fun. You can understand that this is serious, but not be too serious. So there is a way to honor the severity of what's going on and still have fun. We are still human those emotions and we still want to have joy. You can still be going through a moment of suffering and still choose joy. So check in with each other, have virtual happy hours, check in, have a virtual coffee, sit around the, you know, the coffee pot in the morning with your team and check in and talk about things that have nothing to do with this. Talk about your humanity. So show your vulnerable side through this. And I promise you, you'll gain the trust and the expertise you need to move forward. I love that. That's such good advice. I think just asking your team, how are you? But then really saying, what are you afraid of right now? What is worrying you right now? And how can I help? And then I think with the pivot, I think a lot of businesses are like, great, I pivot, but I don't have an idea. Well, if you don't have an idea, guess what? Someone on your team might. And all it's going to take is for you to ask them. So just keeping that open conversation with your team. Thanks, Georgia. That was great. Um, buddy, what is it that you and your customers are doing to train your staff to work in this new virtual environment? Buddy? Thank you, Rebecca. Well, as a training and design company, you know, one of the important things we've always pushed is you should always be educating yourself. Uh, here at VLS, we definitely take time throughout the week to 
uh, educate ourselves on any topic, on any, uh, uh, any of the tools we're using. And even for our customers, we want to make sure that we understand them well. But what we can do be, uh, be doing right now as, you know, realistically, I think most of the workforce is gained maybe two hours a day. Uh, we're not commuting. I mean, if you are, I'm sorry. I mean, you're, you're doing something vital for all of us, and thank you. But for the most part, if you gain that time, we encourage you to take online training. There's all kinds of things available online. Uh, obviously, we, we promote some of that, but I'm not going to push that right now. But just, uh, you know, just going to the Internet, they're, they're something called MOOCs. So it's these massive organizations for online. It's uh, massive open online courses. That alone, I mean, there's so much there that you can... Uh, train yourself, educate your team. And of course, if you're in an organization that's already ahead of the ball, you may already have a training program that right now is a great time for your team to be taking training. Right now is an excellent time for your team to be uh, upping their certifications. You know, if you say you're trying to get PMP certified, right now is a wonderful time to do that. So, you know, while we're pivoting right now, we will come out of this. At some point, this will end. Things may be different, but why wait to educate yourself? Do it now. You know, take this time to get your, increase your certifications, like I said, or learn a new skill. Learn a marketable skill, especially, I mean, there are, how, many, how many million people have applied for unemployment in this past week? This is the time to say, okay, how can I make myself competitive, you know, in the marketplace? I, I know it sounds like a no-brainer, but if you're instead, you know, drinking wine and sitting on the patio, you're wasting your time, you know. And I, I, take that time, you know, take it in but also use that commute time or any additional time you have to take training. And that's what we're advising now. And we're actually uh, working with some of our customers to create training in this downtime because their instructional designers and others have, again, they've, they've gained that commute time. So we're trying to use that and leverage that to the future. I love it. Buddy, that reminds me of my favorite quote. And this led me through an incredibly successful year, and that was work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Wonderful. That's a Jim Rohn quote, and I just love it. And you know what? If you're sitting drinking wine on the patio, why not listen to a great um, audio book? Why not read an educational book at the same time? Precisely. Of course, I know what it's like if you've got kids at home. That might not be possible. I do have kids at home, too, so I get you. Um, anyway, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Great takeaway. Chris, what are your top three productivity tools or tips that you can suggest for people working from home for the very first time? How are we going to handle that? Thanks, Chris. So thank you. Um, it, it is a challenge working from home if it's not something that you're used to. Um, the very first tip I tell people um, this is both for productive productivity and sanity is you need to develop a starting ritual and an ending ritual. So when you're going to the office, you have a routine, you wake up, you, you know, you take your shower, you get dressed, you go out the door and you go to the office. Well, you need, and, and that routine marks your day. Your family knows that you're now, you know, busy doing something and the, um, you know, you'll be back with them later on. There needs to be a, a bookend to begin your day. Um, in, in my own experience, when I started working from home full time over 15 years ago, um, I was changing from a commute where every morning I started at Dunkin' Donuts because I love my cup of coffee and I drank that on my way to work. Well, working from home, I still got up, got dressed, went to Dunkin' Donuts and then turned around, and came home. Um, that that started my work day. Um, and just as important as starting, right? Because that allows you to say, okay, mentally I'm working. It's, you're not distracted by laundry. You're not, it's, um, you know, because when you're at home, you have all of these other things that you've designed to be entertaining and comforting. And, you know, they're not a focused workspace. Now you have to turn your head and, and have it be, you know, I have to ignore all that stuff and focus on what I'm supposed to be doing. So that beginning ritual does that. And for your own sanity, you need to have an ending ritual too. Um, just about everybody I know that begins working from home um, doesn't take advantage of the commute time they've gained. They start work at the same time, but they're working, not commuting. And they keep going and going. And at some point they'll get up and you know, what normally about when they'd come home from commute, 
and they would um, then, you know, uh, go to the kitchen, get their dinner, but they'll wander back by their computer every so often, you know, 10 o'clock at night, ooh, somebody sent me an email, and you sit down, and, and you respond, and while that's, um, it seems great, if you don't unplug and have time to recharge, um, it, 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 working from home all of a sudden becomes working all the time, and that's not good for your productivity. Um, okay, so the tech tools. Um, we're all familiar, I think, at this point with things like Zoho, G Suite, Office 365. Um, these online collaboration tools that a lot of people were dabbling with before are, they are um, essential now. Uh, to be able to collaborate literally working in the same document with a coworker at the same time and be able to see the changes that you're making and talk um, through a video service like this, just like you're sitting across the table from them, um, it's a huge productivity gain. Um, and, and, and finally, think about your workspace. If you're working from home and you're doing it like you used to do it on the weekend where you set your laptop off top up in the kitchen, this is not a long-term good productive workspace. Find a spot, make it where you work, make it clean, take away distractions. Um, if you can, you're gonna be in a lot of video chats. Think about the sound in the room. This room is not particularly good. You, I probably echo a little, but you know, if you, if you handle those things, uh, the people that you're talking with will also be more productive because they'll be able to understand you. Back to you. Awesome. Well, that is great. And uh, that was our last question for this first session. I want to thank everyone who is watching. Um, thanks for joining us. We will be doing another session the same time next week. So that's 10 a.m. Fridays. And before we wrap up, I want to just give you my own piece of advice, something you can take away and do today. And it's starting your day with an affirmation, something that makes you feel great. So I'm going to give you mine. Feel free to use it. I know a lot of people already are because they've heard it before. So I'm going to go for it. It goes like this. I feel great. I am full of energy. Today is the best day ever. I hope you guys are going to have the best day ever. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.